Time for another project that's not a Land Rover, or a Range Rover, or a Stag, or an MGP. What is it? It's a midget! So get yourself ready, a nice hot drink or perhaps a cold beer, maybe even a glass of gin if it's a Friday. Enjoy the video, but uh, before you do, check you subscribed. If you're not, why not? If you think you are, double check. Um, if you want to contact me then it's Church House Classics, and that's all one word, at gmail.com. And if you fancy supporting the channel, or buying me a pint, it could be for anything, but if you specifically want me to buy a pint, then say, Richard. Buy yourself a pint, old chap! Um, all donations are gratefully received, and there's a PayPal Me link scrolling down here. Thank you very much, enjoy the video. Right, so it drives and it stops. Um, it's not been MOT'd in a long time. Um, it comes up from a relative who lives in Bristol. And really, he was just desperately trying to find someone who would uh, give it a once over, do some jobs to it. Um, and get it back to him. So a little bit like the MGB project in that um, it's kind of, it, 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 it sort of needs an overhaul but not a restoration. Um, we'll see what we can do with the paintwork. He did sort of suggest he wanted to repaint but let's see if we can get it running reliably before we start going down the polishing everything up. Um, it is complete. It is a rubber bumper edition as you've noticed already. Um, it has done 65,000 miles. So we've got a couple of obvious issues aside from paint. Um, hood um, has really, it's, it's fallen apart at the seams here. Um, so we're going to need to do something with the hood. Um, whether we can repair it or replace it, I'd imagine just replace it. Um, it's not a bad hood. The frame is in reasonable order. It opens and closes fairly easy. So I think once the fabric comes off it, that'll be an easy enough job. Seat foams are good. Nothing we really need to do with that. It's a bit soggy down the sides there, but nothing particularly nasty. All um, and then my initial observations are, it starts up, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to start. I can actually get in this, by the way. Observe. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get... This is another problem. Nothing opens or closes easily. It's not the easiest thing in the world to get into. Right, so, I can't get in and out of this with the hood up. So it's a case of... There we go. I get in and can drive a midget. Um, getting out is a whole completely different kettle of fish. It's nowhere near as elegant getting out. <laughs> it really isn't. Um, so, seats are actually quite comfortable, but the whole interior really needs um, sorting out and dressing. Um, and then, let's see if we can get out. Get out. Right. So, in order to get out, I need to more or less stand up and then out we come. There we go, we're out. So, driver's door shuts nicely, not the best alignment. Pretty much factory original though. Nice gaps front and back, even with me sitting in it, you weren't able to see that. It's all pretty much as it left the factory. Uh, this side. I think this has been repainted and the reason I say that is because the paint has crazed uh, and also it's micro blistered whereas the other wing hasn't. I think this is original paint over here. No micro blistering, no crazing. That's crazed. You can see the paint shrunk and also micro blistering all over it and then the micro blistering continues onto the bonnet. Um, so it's, I suspect it's had a repaint or a replacement wing and bonnet at some point in its life. Door opens, but everything's just a little bit sticky. Doesn't really want to shut unless you give it a good belt. Uh, but again, gaps are nice. There's no indication that this thing is sagging in any way whatsoever. Boot fit. Yeah, boot fit is about as good as these ever were. Uh, probably could bring that down a little bit, but... It is what it is. Perhaps the tiniest disc brakes that I've seen in a while. Check out these little bastards. Hand for context. 
<laughs> Tiny little things. Now, um, I've been told that the brakes have been overhauled, and that would be kind of suggested that we've got new uh, flexes or new-ish flexes. Uh, there's been some welding down there. Look at that, and there's a bit of grot there. I'm not picking. I'm not picking. Um, what are the rigid lines like? Uh, they all appear to be original. It's possible that a good length of time in warmer climes with less salt on the road has meant that this thing actually is not in bad shape. Um, let's get the torch. Right, so when we get under here, we can see there's lots of surface corrosion and lots of kind of peeling paint, original wiring loom, signs of heat damage from its extreme climate. Nice little original BL cast uh, uh, badge on there. Um, but overall, it is pretty good. Perhaps the smallest radiator I've ever seen in my life. Now, um, amongst the things that I need to look at on this are cooling system, because it, it does run hot, uh, and we'll find out why. I suspect the radiator matrix has never been changed. In which case, this is a 1979 car, you can do the maths. Um, probably get that recalled rather than replaced. Um, the brakes, uh, when I got in it, the brake bias warning, which is this little thing down here, is lit up. Um, and the brakes are woeful. Now, it, it could just be they need bleeding, I don't know. But if the brakes have been overhauled, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? I'm going to go over and check all the bushing on the front suspension. The bushing on this actually looks in better order than it was on the MGB, so there's a reasonable chance um, that we won't need to do an awful lot with it. Although you can see there, that bump stop has fallen off. Um, but then you wouldn't normally get the bump stop down at that sort of level. Um, that's easy enough to change that one, I think. Um, shock absorbers don't appear to be leaking. We can double check them. Steering is reasonably positive. We're missing some clips and things around the gaiters um, so it's gonna be I think first and foremost let's get it driving and stopping nicely then we can get on to the beautification of it so again there's a patch there that's gone on to the inner wing I'm not going to start removing patches underneath it's actually quite pleasant let me get down there so underneath um, original under seal is kind of all flaking off but original seals in good order. Original spring hangers in good order. It's all really quite strong and pleasant under here. Massive oil leak off the gearbox. Uh, we'll see what's going on there. Um, exhaust is intact. It's just really, it's just got like a layer of surface rust over everything. But it's strong and it's solid. And the only patches I've found so far are on the inner the trading edge of the inner wheel arch. You see there the origins or the if you if you ever lift up the body on a frog eye spike, you'll recognise those uh, uh, inner wheel arch extensions and the fact that the headlights are completely exposed. Let's get it running reliably, good brakes all round that I'm confident with. Service suspension. Probably going to have to do something with the carbs, I don't know. It does start, runs very rich. Um, they look familiar, don't they? Um, it's a 1500 uh, Triumph Origin long stroke engine. Sweet enough, runs nicely. Get that fixed, get the cooling system fixed. Give the engine a service, see if we can work out where all the oil is pouring out of the uh, gearbox. And then we can make a call as to where we go, where we go next with it. Um, now at some point I'm going to need to get the bonnet off because it's just going to make life so much bloody easier. This bonnet won't lift up like the uh, MGB bonnet does uh, because the hinge clouts the scuttle just there, you can see. Um, so I'm not worried about that at the moment. I really want to find out what's going on with the brakes. Um, so where are we? Brakes. You can stand on there. So the master looks recent. 
So master cylinder's been replaced. It's like the clutch master has been replaced as well. Fluid looks very clean. So it makes you wonder why the braking performance is so bloody awful and also why the, um, the brake bias is not working. I think what I'll do, because the front's a calipers, I can put a little bit of load on the brake pedal and see how well these calipers are performing. Um, I don't know whether they are the Lockheed original calipers, whether they have just been overhauled or whether they've been serviced or not, I couldn't tell you. The pads are a little bit on the low side in there. You can see the pistons are a long way out as well. Um, so it's entirely possible when I take the, if I, if I were to take these off, possibly find that the pistons are original, badly corroded, and that the cylinders are not actually working on it. Could well be that we've just got no, which again is disappointing. If someone's overhauled the brakes on it, but I don't know what they've done. Um, I think we're really a damn good pressure wash off underneath. Um, and once it's been pressure washed off, then we can put something suitable over the top to protect it. Um, yeah, so what I was looking at in there, you can actually see. We're going to strobe a little bit. We are strobing a little bit. Sorry, move the move the light away. This light's not supposed to strobe, but if you look up inside the caliper, you can see the edge of the piston there. Oh, toe ball on the back of the midget is enthusiastic. I tell you, that is enthusiastic. Now, similar problem to the one that Chris had with his uh, MG. The fuel tank is very exposed underneath the back end here. There's a lot of mud thrown up underneath the back end here as well. But again, I am not seeing holes, am I? There is a hole there. Seems to be double skinned. Um, the rear hanger looks nice and solid and original. You can still see the bolt heads on it and the bolt heads look like they've still got markings on them as well. Got the wrong glasses on, as always. Um, the brake lines on the back axle have been replaced. They look copper to me. Um, and it looks like the handbrake mechanism has been replaced as well. You can see a new, brand spanking new flexi hose there. Got my finger on the tip of it, shining brightly over there. So that looks like the handbrake cable. Sorry, that's the handbrake cable has been replaced. So someone's done that and replaced the rods on the handbrake because that's all looking far too new, which is good. So it probably means the handbrake has been overhauled. Um, and then the brake flexi on the back here, if we go get stabbed by the exhaust, there's the fuel line up there. We might need to replace the fuel line, chap. That's looking very crunchy. Um, that's all looking very crunchy. Um, so come up with a plan of attack and all of this lot just needs pressure washing out tiny bit of crunch over there as you can see it's actually really clean and tidy body shell on this thing I've done this before I've kind of jinxed myself haven't I I've got, got around it say, oh this is a beautiful car there's absolutely nothing wrong with this and then started nibbling away at the corners and found that it's fucked but this one i don't think it is uh looks like the right so i have wedged a piece of wood onto the brake pedal just put i don't know an inch of um, an inch of pressure on that it, the wheels are still going to turn but it's just interesting to see how much they're going to turn so just using a jemmy on the front barely anything on that at all i would expect the front brakes to be binding that one's not but that one's doing nothing at all that one is doing nothing that one has started to tighten up this one nothing and this one is <laughs> locked solid <laughs> Right, okay, so we've got one and a half wheels braking on this. Um, all right. Um, we can test further, but I think realistically uh, we're looking at an overhaul 
on brakes here. I'll get the drums off the back and see where we're going with it. And then I was thinking about that. Well, that's crap because we didn't actually get a bass line. So, brakes are disengaged at the moment. And... <coughs> <laughs> that might be binding that might be binding that one about the same this one is now off so I was getting some braking effort on that corner and that's a little bit looser so brake on that side is completely locked on uh, handbrake is off by the way folks just in case you were wondering and before someone reaches for the comments you can comment down below reaches for the comments and start screeching at me left the handbrake on your dick no i didn't no i didn't um so i might just get the light over here and see if we can't get this drum off well that was actually easier than i thought the adjuster's down here torch torch the adjuster stand you in the drum there the trust is down here and on the back plate here square plug get yourself one of these this little square plug brake adjuster um, and they are whatever that is three eighths it looks like I couldn't tell you anyway um, they're off a um, couple of observations first and foremost um, I would have thought That these pads are relatively recent so <coughs> pads have been changed and also <coughs> stand this back <coughs> over here push the pad and you can see the pistons are moving through the slave so the slave's not seized up that's encouraging so it could just be uh, that uh, nothing is aligned at the back here now what's slightly concerning is this pad is sitting a long way off the back plate and that one isn't it and you can see the gap here at the top see the slave you see the, the, the shadow behind the slave cylinder here well I can get a screwdriver in behind that so the slave cylinder is not secured to the back plate look there you go that's probably an easier way of demonstrating it isn't it Richard um, that's probably not ideal really is it certainly not going to help it and you can see there where the hub rotating has chewed up the dust seal um yeah i think we've got a classic example here of someone who probably should not have been working on the brakes anyway the good news is uh, that some of the components have been replaced here so it could just be a case of taking it all apart putting it back together again properly um and seeing where we get to can't see anything else in there let's get all the shoes and everything off yeah that uh, fuel line is definitely a bit on the tired side we can sort that out as you can see that all the uh, rigid lines have been replaced uh, and the flexes look to have been replaced too um right so that's one side apart let's go and get the other side apart I shall report back. Right, we got this side out. Um, basically, um, the adjuster had been massively tightened up. It was, it was, it was so tight I couldn't turn this um, with any kind of reasonable amount of force. The drum um, is tired. Those grooves in there really are quite deep. Um, so. It's not great. Um, right, okay, so let's see. Right, so the slave is not seized up. God, let's see, you can actually see what's going on. There we are, right. Ah, right, well, I'm gonna say that is not ideal. So the slave is leaking fluid. Both, both ends um, so that's a dead slave uh, we couldn't say when that actually went on could we uh, there's no point taking all the shoes and everything off I need to order up a load of parts here 
So it looks like um, that's only recently started leaking because I can't see is there contamination on the shoes. Well, there's something going on there. That's contamination, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't want to go too berserk with these shoes because I don't know what they are. What does it say on it? Oh, they're, they're relatively recently stamped. So there's a reasonable chance they haven't got asbestos in them, which is what you need to be careful of. Um, now, I think we're looking at a complete overhaul on these back brakes. I don't know what the other drum was like. I didn't actually bother to look at it. Oh, we get the front calipers off next. So other drum. Yeah, the other drum's fine. Um, no, it's got the, helpfully got the measurements in there. Max diameter and the lining and the minimum figures. It's all there. Quite a lot of dust and shit in there, but then I'm not surprised if the shoes and everything are wobbling around like a dick in a bucket is not going to help it really, is it? Now, um, let's get the front end apart. I'm not even convinced this fluid coming through to the right hand rear. Um, I've got, I've chopped the pipe because it was just twisting on the ferrule in the back here. Um, yeah, there's no fluid coming out of it. Caps off, I would expect that to be drip, 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 drip. I mean, I'm getting some fluid in there now. Oh, fuck's sake. Right, front end. Right, pads are out. I've just opened the bleed nipple because I'm draining the uh, the brake fluid system down. Um, probably because I'm going to need calipers and so forth off. Now, here, we can see one of these pistons is out twice the distance of the other, which would kind of suggest to me that maybe uh, one side's not working. Now, the easy way to find out, of course, is to see if we can't retract the piston. Oh, that one did go back in. So the fact that they're retracting, that one's not going back in. That one's stuck. That one went back in. It's not the best way of retracting the pistons. Let's go and get a pry bar. La la, la 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 la, la. Into the pry bar drawer. Okay. That one might have been prying quite hard, that one. <laughs> right, let's see if we can't get this outer piston to retract. Oh, right, it just clicked and it went in. Right, okay, so the pistons are moving. Um, whether they are any good or not, I couldn't tell you. Let me just do this nut up again, because there should be enough hydraulic pressure in here for me to extract these pistons a little bit and see if we can see what the condition of them is. Um, it's probably gonna squirt out all over the back now. Still no brake fluid off the back pipe. Which is encouraging. Right, so both of the pistons moved. Ah, it's a fucking long way down to that brake pedal. Right, so they are moving. They've come out. There we go. That's got them out. Are there signs of corrosion on those pistons? Um, so they're probably about due for a refurb, really, aren't they? So we'll look at that. Um, let's see now if we've got any brake fluid out the back yet. Yes, we have. Now, when I cut a brake line, that's sort of what I'd expect to happen. And it wasn't. So it's probably all air up to this corner. Right, let's leave that to drain the system down. I'm gonna get the caliper off. Right, driver's side front is all apart. Um, caliper, let's bring him outside into the daylight. 
it's not as horrific as I first thought. I am going to see if we can't get these pistons to extract a little bit more. Um, it could just be dirt on them. But if the pistons are coming most of the way out and are showing signs of rust, then they're going to get replaced. Um, the other thing I wanted to check on this side was the state of the disc on the reverse face. Now the forward face has got ridges on it, the reverse face is nice and shiny. Um, I think for the cost of a pair of discs, we swap them. Um, yeah, I'll need to look at it. I need to find out whether that's cost effective or not. Um, right, now, come round to the left hand corner. And let's adjust you so you can see what uh, is going on. Let's bring some lighting down because one of the observations I had working on the on the other side was the ease with which I could undo the bolts. So first and foremost we've got a nice banjo bolt here um, for the the brake line. Okay? One finger. I'm not fucking Hercules folks. I am not Hercules. It's not very safe, is it, folks? Right, okay. Never mind. So we'll take it out. That's out. Did I lose a washer? There's a... I was gonna, I'm not going to salvage the washer for the time being. That can just go back in there. Banjo can go back in there. Right, then we've got the two mounting bolts for the caliper to the back end of the hub. Wind that in and let's see because there are lock tabs on these. Oh, they might have actually used the lock tab on this side, they haven't used the lock tab on the other side. You've only used one of them. Now, I reckon these should be done up to about, and I'm going to guess, 55 foot pounds. Did that look like 55 foot pounds to you? And that was with the locking tab on it as well. I don't know what you think. So, yes. Is the answer. I don't know what the question is though. Put the lock tab back. out of the way now oh this one might be a bit tighter but not a lot not a lot at all so yeah complete fanny let's move the bottle out of the way otherwise the canvas can just drop down onto the bottle now what i'll probably do is get a bit of air in the caliper, see if we can't push the pistons out um, and see what sort of state they're looking in. Um, right, there we go. That's out. So the bottom locking tab was pretty much like that, and the top locking tab actually put up a bit of a fight. I'll give it that. Uh, edge of pistons is looking a bit rusty but it could well be it is literally just the outside edge right trying to get the handbrake linkage off on this side and somewhat predictably the mechanism is completely seized that pin there is seized solid it is not going to move so a bit of lube first let's let that soak in um on the floor where I want to be now it's not the torch just shining right in my face nope uh, oh, right that's wiggling 
Is the ping going to come out though? Is the ping going to come out? $64 million question. A bit more lube. A lot of rust coming out on this surface here. You spray the penetrant on there, you know it's doing its thing because. Uh, oh, there it goes. Pins out. And clamps off. Right, now. Now we should be able to get these shoes off. Because in theory, what we should be able to do is extract this lot. The seagulls have come in. You know why the seagulls have come in? Because the weather is horrific. I mean, bearing in mind this lot's all gonna, absolutely all of this lot is gonna get replaced. Uh, what is that? That's that spring there. So that spring there can come off. There's that spring there. That spring there is off. And then we've got the handbrake lever, very similar to the stag handbrake lever. Um, it's even got a little gator on the back there. A worn out gator. But yeah, very similar in its design to the stag handbrake mechanism. Huge amount of wear in that pin, in that slot there though. Um, but it's off. And then, well I don't know what's holding the... Uh, I'll tell you what's holding it on. It's the remains of the C-clip, which was never installed properly. Well, here comes the C-clip. I shouldn't be able to get this C-clip off so easily. Can't get it off this easily this time. There we are. One C-clip. That's what should hold the sleeve in place. Now, the other thing I struggled with on this and I'm going to need to get it off is the bleed nipple and the reason I cut the line was because I couldn't get the bleed nipple undone um, because the other thing I probably want to do at some point is I don't know if there's a seal behind here because there's a lot of crap down here I'm not going to go too berserk with this dust down here because it breaks and we don't know whether this thing on asbestos breaks or it's ever been cleaned out ever um, but I'll need to figure out how or whether there's a seal in the or, 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 or. it looks like that screw there holds this front plate on isn't it and it looks like there may be a bearing underneath that but if I take that off there's going to be a gasket underneath there and whatever oil is in the diff is going to pour out all over the floor uh, that said there's a fair amount of play in this bearing. So you've got back mash in the div, but I'm able to click it backwards and forwards here, so I suspect the wheel bearing on the back is gone. If you can feel it, it's fucked, is the, uh, is the general rule of thumb. Um, Right, okay, well, we are where we are with that. Let's go and get the other side done. Right, um, so I got the bleed nipple off. You can see the damage there caused by the hub rubbing against the rubber because the slave was rocking around like a dick in a bucket. Now, the um, bleed nipple is 7mm. I always thought these were quarter inch, but it's just a cheapo, cheapo. What's interesting is whoever did the brakes, I think has reused the original ferrules, which is why I couldn't get the fucking thing off. I mean, I have managed to loosen it now, so let's see what the flare's like. Because that dictates whether... Oh, it's got a double flare on it, at least. Um... Yeah, it's not helpful. Now, on the... Let me spat it down there. Because I'm going to have to replace this cylinder anyway, or replace the boot on it. When you take the piston out, let's take the seal off first. Okay, so there's... 
there's some fluid in there. There's a lot of contamination though. This is not a new sleeve. So I'm just going to replace both sleeves. I couldn't tell you when that went on. Um, on this side. I think for the cost of them. It is not worth fucking around here. I just bit my fingernail backwards. That was fun. Don't do that Richard. That hurts. Right now. There we go. Oh there's fluid on this side. So we've got fluid leaking past on this side. You can see fluid inside the seal. Oh, So again, lots of contamination. Two shagged out rear slaves. Don't bode well, does it? Right, let's go and get the other side apart. That can all go down there. Oh. Looking more at the... Uh, where on this hub let's just put the torch up here now watch this you ready i think that might be fucked bearing in mind that the drum will attach to that and the wheel will attach to that and that i don't know if you can actually see look at the gap there Get the camera down. Can we get in real close? Ready? That's got about two mil of end float in it. Fuck it, you fuck face. Right, it's rescue me torch, because what happens is I leave the torch under the wheel arch, the battery goes flat, and then I spend the next three weeks looking for the bastard thing. Blame it on the pixies. <laughs> silly arse. What a silly arse. Right, I'm going to do this side now. Get all the pads and everything off. I need another box. Right, a few amusing observations on this side. Um, that's the shoe, I think, that needs to go into the adjuster. That's just fallen out. Why's that fallen out? That shouldn't be falling out. That should stay in there. Anyway. There we are. There's the little adjuster chappy goes in there. I'll take both of those shoes out in a minute. Um, what I wanted to be amused about on this side was the fact that the handbrake mechanism, the pivot pin right there, completely seized. Absolutely fucking seized up solid. Um, I'll try and lube it, but I suspect what will happen is that the pin, looks like the clevis pin hole is elongated too. Um, and again, copper line reused a very shagged out ferrule. Look at that. So someone's put new lines in, but not bothered to replace the ferrules. And the cylinder was leaking. So yeah, we're doing really well here, folks. Let me just get this other shoe out, because I don't want to lose these fuckers. Um, right, that's all of the, oh yeah, one, one last observation. That's axle oil. It's leaking out from the back end of the hub here. I suspect because I've taken the drum and the wheel off, there's probably no gasket behind here. And again, I've got some play in this one as well. Um, oh dear, oh dear. Right, I'm gonna drain the diff down, I think, next, because otherwise it's just gonna make a horrendous mess on my floor. Um, and I found a hole. Next to one of the welded patches. That's not difficult to fix. I'll be able to do something with that. We're not talking about a nut and bolt restoration here, but we are talking about making this thing reasonably solid and having a legitimate MOT. So, interesting that someone replaced the handbrake linkage, but not the handbrake levers. I'll need to replace this. I just tore it and I'm taking it apart. Someone replaced the handbrake linkage but not the levers. Didn't bother to put new brake lines in but didn't change the ferrules or the sleigh cylinders. Didn't even bother to fix the sleigh cylinders to the other side. Yeah, it's no wonder the old Duchess wasn't slowing down much. Um, right, okay. Well, we've got it all apart, which is good news.
Interesting conversation with the owner next. I don't know how much he paid for his brake refurb. <laughs>